I've got a question here from Jensen Thomas, and he's asking how to format output when it is sent to an Excel file. And I appreciate the comment. Jensen's also watched a, a video that I did before on adding the current date uh, to a file name. So thank you for that. Now, the only question is, Jensen, why are you not a subscriber? Not going to do it. Wouldn't be prudent at this juncture. So I've got built out here a sample workflow uh, where I'm changing up the data set. I've, I've done in the past data sets with healthcare. Now I'm moving on to lendingclub.com data here. And I've got some pre-work that I'm doing uh, just to get the data formatted correctly. So uh, an auto field tool to make sure the data types are set, a select tool, data cleansing to clear out some of the descriptions in, uh, in some of the fields that have junk things like characters, uh, trailing in leading spaces, that kind of stuff is in there, and then a record ID since there isn't one in this data set. I'm also summarizing the data by the purpose of the loan, and that's what I'm going to put out into Excel and format it. Uh, and now I'm going to copy this out of here only because I don't want to waste time talking about those tools. We can go directly on to how to do the formatting. So we'll copy that out of here, paste this into a new workflow, and then we'll also increase the zoom a bit here so we can see everything uh, pretty well. I'm somewhat happy with that. Let's, let's go there. Uh, so I've, I'm loading in the data set uh, and then I'm going to summarize it. In fact, I'm going to run the workflow here just so we can see the data. And as I look at the output, you'll see that the loan purpose can be like small business, credit card loan, medical loan, wedding, and I'm just counting the number of loans for each of those types. The full data set has some fields like the loan amount that was requested, interest rates, whether they own their home, or not in some descriptor fields that I cleaned up and the purposes is over here. That's what we're really interested in. Now, when people think about exporting this data to Excel, uh, typically they'll go through a couple steps. The first thing they'll, they'll do is they'll pull an output data tool in and they'll just take this and export it uh, directly to Excel. Uh, of course, I'm going to choose to overwrite a file here when I come in. I already have one created. Yes, we'll replace it. And I'm going to call this sheet summary. And I'll go ahead and say that we're going to overwrite the file when we output, output the data. So I can run this and then go ahead and look at that Excel file. And when I look at it, you'll see it's just very raw. It's got the field headers and, uh, and the data. That's it. And so what a lot of people will do is they'll come in and they'll say, well, let me go to the reporting palette and pull a table in. And uh, let's go ahead and just leave it the way that it is. Everything's sort of auto configured. Um, I can do the table with as, as automatic. Sure. And then let's go ahead and run it. And when we run the workflow and we look at the Excel file, it will look like junk. It's just a bunch of, of, uh, of code in here. Um, and that's because what we then need to do after we create the basic table is use a, a render tool. OK, so we're going to go ahead and drop the render tool in here. Um, and that looks horrendous. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick here. Go ahead and drop um, this down a little bit here and then we'll go ahead and render it. I'm gonna put this particular tool into its own uh, container, and then we're just gonna disable that, that container there. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more space so we can see the, the full workflow. All right, so now I'm focused on the way the render tool is going to work, and we're gonna change a couple options here. In the render configuration, we want to move this to choose a specific, specific output file, and then I wanna save it to the file so I'm clicking that save icon where my where that file is saved. And I happen to have it uh, on the C drive in a, in a temp folder here. And um, and we're going to change this type. If I can pull up the screen so you can see that change the data type to Excel so you can see that. And there's that loan permit purpose summary I previously created. So we'll go ahead and save that. Yes, I want to want to overwrite it. And then we need to make a few other changes here. So the data field that's coming in is the table that was created in the previous step. All right, I'm not gonna do any fancy things with headers and footers or change any of the other settings around the report style, okay? But what I, what I want to do within the table itself, to go back to the basic table setup here, is modify a bit of the way that the table 
looks okay and I am going to expand this a bit so we can see all of the all of the options in here and under under the uh, column configuration I can go into the loan purpose I could rename it but I can also change the way that it's laid out I can define the width to be automatic or um, fixed uh, I can also change the alignment. So I want the loan purpose to be aligned to the left, um, and, I, and I'm happy with the way that the rest of it works, but I do want to change the count of, count of loans. This I want to make a little bit different. And so for this one, we'll make the alignment in the center, and then we're going to uh, create a rule for this particular column. So we'll go ahead and create a rule here. And we're going to change this uh, rule name we're going to say greater than a thousand rule and we'll say when we're going to apply this rule when the count of loans is greater than or equal to 1000 and then we're going to change uh, the font to be bold and we're going to change the text color so that it becomes red okay that's cool. I can do that. We'll close. And you'll notice now the column rule changes to an edit button and it's bolded. All right. We're going to make one other change here and that is to the default table settings. Okay. I want to change the header so that the header is a specific color and we're going to make it this teal color. All right. Um, and that's actually the text color. I want the background color to be teal and I want the text color to be white. All right. We're also going to increase the font size to 12 and make it bold. So now the header will be this background teal color. It'll be a white text. It'll be size 12 font and it'll be bold. I could also do other things like changing the way the border looks. I can change the table altogether and add, add uh, padding to it if I wanted to, and then just change the raw data that's going to show up in there. So there's, there's quite a bit of a functionality here. I will mention one thing, what you may have seen uh, inside uh, inside this is also a create row rule. Um, we can create alternating colors on the rows if we want to, like when the row number is uh, a certain number, if it's odd or even, we can change the uh, the row color there to make it uh, make it look a certain way. Okay, so I'm I'm going to leave that as it is, and we'll go ahead and and run it, and we should see some of the the output here uh, as it renders look the way that we anticipated we would want it to look. All right, so again, I'm going down to the results. Let's click on the link to the Excel file here and, and see what it looks like. Yeah, so I got it to render with the new background color and uh, in the text color is white. It's size 12 Arial font, which is what I want it to be. And anytime that there is a value over a thousand, it's colored in red. All right, and it's alternating rows here, um, colors by default, which is good. That's exactly what we wanted it to do. Now, there, there are a couple other things I should mention here about this. Um, one of the ways we could have done this is to create this alone purpose summary Excel file with the formatting already done. And then basically we would just be overwriting the data and not overwriting the file. The reason why I'm not doing it that way is because Jensen in his comment said, can I do it dynamically? If the data is dynamic, if you're not always going to have 14 rows plus one for the headers, 15, uh, then that sort of pre-built template is not gonna, gonna work for you. Um, so if, if it's always gonna be the same size, sure, but most of the time the work we're doing is very dynamic. So I need it to be able to be flexible and uh, to design the, the custom formatting the way that I want it. Um, now, I will say the AlterX tools are good but they're not perfect. And one of the issues that I encounter is that the rendering of the size of the tables to be like automatic in the sense that it should sort of look like that doesn't always work correctly, okay? That's just one of the caveats. That's what it does, you have to deal with it. Is it a huge deal? Is it a deal breaker to me? No, if I want it to be formatted and colored correctly, this is more important than having it be a little bit wider uh, than it should be. So that's my take on it. Okay, that's it. I'm going to leave it there, Jensen. I hope that um, I hope I answered your questions and please subscribe. You all should subscribe. Get notifications when I have new content coming out because it's coming fast and furious. That's it for now. I'll catch you on the next one.